hello and happy Friday. Happy, happy, happy Friday. We are going to have such, hello, good morning, Valerie. We are going to have such a fun, just packed full of information live today. I uh, I woke up this morning and you know what? It's May 19th. I know that because it's my niece's birthday. Happy birthday, Kimmy. I love you dearly. Yesterday was my sister's birthday and Kimmy is her one and only daughter and it's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Kimmy. And, but it's May 19th in Southern California. It's supposed to be warm. It's a, hello, Martha. It's supposed to be hot and it is cloudy. It is misty. We're supposed to have thunderstorms and I'm like, gosh, darn it. I am all about just having, I want sunshine. I want to wear the cute little things that I've been buying. So I decided that today I was going to dress in the most colorful outfit I could find. And I, hello, Courtney. And so I have on my free people little top here. This is one of those button downs. It's the same style as the last button down that I wore that you all like to the kind of like the blue and the brown one. Well, this one is like yellow and pink and orange. And it just, to me, this just azudes, azudes, is that, is that the right word? I don't think that's the right word, but anyway, you get what I'm saying. It just screams like sunshine and happiness and vacation vibes. But I didn't stop with just the top because I have on my green Tahiti pants. So let me show you. Yeah, you got to see the whole outfit. So I, I have on my Doc Martens, my green pants, and my little um, flowery button down. So. If you, wherever you are, if it's not sunny, I am bringing the sunshine to you today. So that is the energy that we're going in with today's life. And that's the energy that we're going to keep on today's live because I want it to be packed full of fun, fun and sunshine. In fact, I was telling Brandon this morning that this outfit reminds me, hold on, let me just move my camera just a little bit. Because I feel, hold on, ah, oh, hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, I'm making this worse. Okay, we're going to, uh, okay, I'm not going to move my camera again. Okay, let me get situated here. All right, I just felt like my head was getting cut off, and I didn't want my head to get cut off on, now I think it's too high. Hold on, everybody. All right, you would think, now you would think, that I would have this all situated. Now it's too low. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is just my life in a nutshell. All right. If this does not explain everything that is Lonnie, I don't know what does. Okay. So I put on my outfit and I showed Brandon this morning. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this cute little outfit I'm wearing. It's all full of sunshine and I absolutely love it. And it reminded me of when I used to work for a bank, all right? I started when I was young. I was like, I don't know, I think 20 when I started working for the bank. And I started as a part-time drive through teller. And then what I did is I worked my way up. And I eventually, during one point of the eight years that I worked for the bank, I was a branch secretary down in La Jolla. And it was right on, right next to La Jolla Shores, just in downtown La Jolla. And it was very 80s and it kind of had like that working girl vibe. You know, the one where um, Melanie Griffith, is that it? Yeah, Melanie Griffin, Griffith um, would wear tennis shoes on the streets of New York with her business suits. That was kind of the vibe I had then. Well, it was Halloween and, you know, we were supposed to dress up for and go to work and all the girls my age and all the ladies were all like, you know what? I'm going to be a sexy kitten. I'm going to be a sexy nurse. I'm going to be a sexy this. I'm going to be a sexy that. And so I show up to work in a shirt that looks just like this one, maybe a little bit brighter. I had on some Bermuda shorts, white socks up to my knees with some tennis shoes. 
And I put like that white zinc on my face because, you know, like every tourist in Hawaii back then would have that white zinc all on their face with like a funky hat. And I showed up as a tourist going to Hawaii. And I think back at that story. And you know what? I've always been the quirky one. I've always been the one to just live life to the her to the music that's playing in her head and it's funny how I look back at that and I'm like wow you know what I am still channeling that same vibe as to when um as to when I was 20. So don't think if you're younger and you're watching this and you're like oh my gosh you know what when I get older I'm going to have to like change my ways. No you're not. You can still be whoever you want to be at any age. I, 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 that's how I live. So that is what I'm going to, that's what, that's my little story for the morning. So we have a packed full hour and I've got all sorts of stuff to talk to you about. Um, I have a Zoom meeting later today and I will fill you in more on Monday. It's a great opportunity. I think that might be coming up that I would be sharing with you. I don't want to say a whole lot because I don't have a whole lot of details, but there's some exciting stuff working. And of course, it involves all of you because you know what? You're kind of like my life. And then let's see. Oh, and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to shoot some more videos. I just posted a video of me thrifting where I went and I specifically looked for free people items. Um, Really quick, Rolo from TikTok wants to know if your tattoos have ever hid, hindered any of your job opportunities. Funny you should ask that, Rolo, because we're actually, that's what Tattoo Tuesday is. That's going to be the main subject on Tuesday. But um, let, me, let me answer this, and then I'm going to talk to you about the video idea. But Rolo, truthfully, by the time that I started getting tattooed and by the time my tattoos became super visual, um, I was already established enough in my career that I basically, if you wanted me and you wanted my book of business, because I was an escrow officer, I was an independent escrow officer, so I had my own customers, I had people who used me based on my knowledge, um, I, they had to overlook my tattoos. So basically, if I went in and I'm like, hey, I want to work for this escrow company, and I can bring you X amount of um, X amount of business, they would be like, oh, okay, we don't care if you have tattoos. So I was in that kind of unique um, position. Now, when I first started escrow, and I first started getting tattooed, our company had a no tattoo policy. So whenever anybody from the corporate office would come in, I would have to cover up my tattoos. So whether it was in the middle of July or middle of August and it was 100 degrees outside, I would be sitting there in a, a, in a sweater. So it is still a subject that needs to be uh, addressed and it's still a subject that does hinder people today. Um, spoiler alert, on Tuesday, that is going to be the main subject. I'm going to be talking about, you know, even today when it's very widely accepted socially, that sometimes employers are still looking at it as a negative and they are discriminating against people with tattoos. You know, so we're going to look at it kind of like the both ways. And, and but again, more information. But I just wanted to make sure that I address that to you today. OK, so um, OK, the video that I posted yesterday, the video that I posted yesterday was me thrift shopping. And I thrift I thrifted in Encinitas, which I absolutely love going home. That's where I grew up. But I thrifted in Encinitas and I thrifted with a specific brand in mind. And what I did is I looked and I was shopping specifically for free people brand. And I think I found a lot of cute things. Now, my question to you is YouTube is this. I love those kind of videos and I love doing them, but I want to make sure that I have enough variety in my videos as to not become redundant. So I was thinking about changing it up just a little bit, or not really changing, but like adding something into the rotation. And I was going to do it where 
like if I find a recipe that I really like, um, I'll go to the store, I'll buy the stuff, I'll put it together and I'll try it and I'll see how I like it. And I was wondering if that would be something that you would be interested in because I have been seeing some TikToks here lately on some really cool vegetarian um, dishes that I would like to try. And I'm not, just like with my makeup, I am not the best cook. I, I'm a good cook. I just don't cook very often. But it would be something that I, I, I thought it would be kind of fun. Um, I, I think it would be kind of fun to incorporate into the YouTube schedule. And then also, too, what I was thinking about doing is, is like going to the rack and then um, not only showing you the items that they have available at the rack, but to show you like putting them together. Like, you know what, if you walk into the rack with a hundred dollars, here's an outfit that you could build. So I was thinking about going, grabbing the things off the rack and then going into the dressing room and putting them all together and showing you the outfits that way. And I'm really curious um, how you feel about that. So let me know your thoughts on that. Um, Courtney says, Brenda wants to know how often you buzz your hair. I buzz my hair about every seven to 10 days. In fact, before I came live, I'm sitting there and I was looking and like, man, I'm starting to look all like, um, I look, I, my hair is too long. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So, and here's the thing. It's, it's like, I've been sitting here trying to just, Valerie, you like that idea? Awesome. Okay. Then I'm going to start incorporating those into, um, I'm going to start incorporating those more into the rotation because like I said, I don't want it to be where it's just redundant as much as I love thrifting and I love shopping. I want to make it interesting for you too. Now, um, Brenda, again, I buzz my hair about every seven to 10 days. I use the Philips Norelco, um, trimmer and it's not a razor. I called it a razor one time and there was a huge uproar about how, it's not a razor. It's a clipper. And I do it about every seven to 10 days. And I was sitting here and I was thinking like, how can I buzz my hair live? I mean, I know how I could do it. I could sit right here, get the buzzer and buzz my hair. But the problem is, is that when I buzz my hair like that, hair goes everywhere. And I mean, everywhere. So then I'm starting thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get hair all over my keyboard. But then I was thinking, well, Lonnie, you can just move back a little bit and you can buzz your hair. So that's another idea that I was thinking about for our lives is um, doing a live demonstration on how I buzz my hair because I absolutely 100% love my hair so much. I just can never think about, I mean... Will I ever grow my hair back? I never like to say always, and I never like to say never. I think that those are just too definite. They're like, there's no wiggle room. And I think life is all about wiggle room. I mean, I wake up every morning and I like to look different. You just never know. As I, as I like try to imagine myself with longer hair, I cannot see that vision um, so I'm going to be keeping this for a really long time. It is the most, I've never had a haircut represent me more. And so I am going to be keeping it for a very long time. Lauren says, same with my hair. I have half of, I have half of my hair shaved and the other half long. Yeah, no, I used to, when, when I had like a really cute cut before the pandemic, when I was going to my barber more often, um, I had like this side shaved, like all kind of like kind of like shaved up the right side and then kind of longer on the left. And I thought that that was really cute. But the problem is, is like I see cute hairstyles and I see cute haircuts. And then I go to my barber and I'm like, this is what I want. And he's like, no, you have too much hair. And I'm like, well, no, that's not true. I can make it work. And he's like, okay, we'll try. And then I walk around with like a half of a Q-tip. I look like a Q-tip. Or I look like a tumbleweed is attacking my head. I mean, for me, my hair, I love my hair. It, 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 it's, I love my hair now. Let's just put it that way. I've always struggled with my hair. So, um, yeah, so I have those ideas for the video. I'm probably one day going to figure out how to buzz, um, to buzz my hair live just so you can see how easy it is. 
And the whole thing is, it's like my hair is so short that if I were to mess up in a couple of days, it would be, you wouldn't even see it. Because when I first started buzzing my own hair, I actually forgot to put the guard on. And again, just like the story of my life, just how I've always been kind of marching to my own music in my head. I'm sitting there and I have my razor and I'm like, and it made a really weird noise. And I had hair flying everywhere. And I'm like, gosh, that's kind of strange. I wonder why it's doing that. And then I'm like, let's just try it again. And I'm like, and I'm like, no, Lonnie, something's wrong. And I look down, I'm like, oh, that's because you have no guard on your clipper. So I went in and I actually shaved two stripes on the side of my head. Did I get upset? Absolutely not. I just laughed. I mean, it's like, what am I going to do? I can't glue the hair back on my head. You know, I am just going to have, um, I'm just going to deal with it. So what I did is I clippered it all just a little bit tighter so the <laughs> You could still see the stripes, but it, you know, in a couple of weeks, it, like in a week, you could barely tell it. And when I was talking to people, I would only like talk to them on the right side. So they couldn't see the left side. I'd be like, Hey, how are you? They'd be like, good. How are you? I'd be like, I'm fine. So what's new? So sometimes I think we take our hair way too serious. Linda says, um, I have thinning hair due to an autoimmune condition. So I buzzed it and it looks and it feels better. Thank you for leading the way. Awesome. And you know what? And here's a little tip. I get a lot of comments. And Linda, I, I know that you love your hair and I know you look amazing. But I get a lot of comments sometimes and the comments are, um, I wish I could, you know, buzz my hair, but I have thinner hair. And the key to that is my opinion. The key to that is, is lighten your hair. The lighter your hair is, the less you will notice how thin it is. Because when I, um, dyed my hair, that super dark blue, like that, like shockingly dark blue, I could see where my hairline, I mean, I have like I don't have like a receding hairline, but I have like, like a little natural, like little whoop right there. And I could totally see that. And then also to just anywhere around my hair, I could see my scalp more. So if you have thinner hair, um, make sure you have a lighter color hair and then buzz it. And truthfully, I, I mean, and I, I, I would imagine, because I never want to say something that I'm not 100% um, absolutely sure of, but I would imagine, I think that that would be okay. That's just what I'm going to say. Um, okay. Courtney says, there seems to be a lot of questions coming through on TikTok. Let me know if it's setting you back or throwing you off. No, not at all, Courtney. Today, we are, I, I have no time limit for today's live. I got my power cord for my camera. So we're just going to hang out for as long as we're going to hang out. I'm on no, um, I'm on no time, time crunch today. And also too, I'm trying to kind of take a look if, if that helps you, Courtney, if not, just throw them on over and I'll answer them as, as they come across. So yeah. So, okay. YouTube, like I just said, I have my power cord on my camera I'm feeling all bright and shiny, and today we're just going to hang out until we just stop hanging out. Um, scrapbook would like to know, um, would like, scrapbook would like to know if you like to match your clothes to your color tattoos. No, not at all. I, I have never color coordinated my tattoos. It would be like me saying like, um, no. No, because I was trying to like get a different example because I mean, some colors look better on me depending on whatever color hair I have at the time, but I've never coordinated a, um, an outfit around my, my tattoos. To me, they're just a part of my skin and I don't look at my untattooed skin any different than I look at my tattooed skin. Um, Julie said, would you talk more about getting sober? Absolutely. And um, Tracy said, good morning, beautiful uh, beings. Hello, Tracy. So Julie, part of, um, yes, yes, I will talk about that. Like I said, I have no, I have no time frame, but I've been sober now for just about nine years. And I personally don't count the days. 
And I don't count the days because I feel like if I count the days, that means it's like there's an, an end date. To me, it's like drinking Lonnie and sober Lonnie. I don't have, I, 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 they're, they're just two different people. And I decided to get sober on the morning that I woke up and I realized that I had gambled all my money away. I was not happy. My children would not, did not like me, didn't speak to me. And I asked myself a question. I still remember, I, I can still put myself in my body and re, and like get that feeling of what I was feeling. And I was like, I don't want to I don't want to die this way. I don't want to live my life never knowing what happiness is. And I'm like, gosh, you know, okay, that's a bold statement, Lonnie. I'm like, okay, so how, how, how are you going to be happy? And I didn't know how to be happy. I was never taught as a child how to be happy. You know, it was just something that was so foreign in my way of thinking that I remember I grabbed my phone and I Googled how to be happy. And one of the things that it said to do, Sandy, thank you so much. And one of the things that the Google told me to do was to write down a list of the things that you like about your life and the things that you don't like about your life and then the things that you can change about your life. I didn't like anything about my life. There was no redeeming moment of happiness. There was nothing I could find other than the fact that I was still breathing. Um, so I started in like all the things that were keeping me from being happy and it all led back to drinking. Now you have to realize that I had been drinking for so long that it was my identity. I had no idea what sober Lonnie was about. I didn't know who she was. And truthfully, in the back of my mind, I didn't know if I could do it. I had, I didn't, truthfully, I didn't think I could do it. So I'm like, okay, even if I can't do it, I have to try. I have to have to try. So I told Robert and Brandon wasn't speaking to me at that time, but I told Robert what I was going to do because he was sober just about a year before I got sober. And he's like, okay, because I had told him so many times prior. So my pattern was to always get up in the morning and um, go to work at five o'clock. I would come home, I would start drinking and I wouldn't stop. I would get up in the morning, go to work, come home, start drinking and I wouldn't stop. Weekends were nothing but drinking. So I'm like, okay, so I got up, I went to work, and I'm like, oh no, I don't know if I can go home and not drink. I mean, it's what I do, it's who I am. So I called Robert, and I'm like, dude, I can't go home. I, 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 if I go home, I'm going to drink. I have to do something else. I go, I'm going to go to the movies. And he's like, cool, I'll go with you. So we went and we saw Johnny Knoxville's Bad Grandpa still remember that movie and it's still that <laughs> bad grandpa is what got me to be sober and I'm like so we went to the movies I sat there I went right home and I went to bed you know I went to sleep and then the next morning I woke up I'm like dang I just made it 24 hours okay let's do this again and so then um <laughs> Courtney says that um, you watched it the other night it was so effing it was hilarious it was perfect so then I woke up the next morning, I went to work, and then instead of going to the movies, I came home, grabbed my dog, and I went for a walk. I slowly but surely, every single day, started breaking that habit of drinking. And one thing has just led to another, which has led to another, which has led to another. So nine years later, I am sober. But I'm going to tell you right now, if anybody is out there, and if anybody is listening, and if anybody is thinking about getting sober... Um, I didn't do AA, but had I had the opportunity to do it all over again, I most I, I, I would go to AA. Just for the simple reason is that there's so much complexity with addiction that you kind of have to do more than just stop drinking. 
you have to reprogram and figure out why you are doing to yourself what you're doing. I still have an addictive mind. My mind is still actively addicted, but I know the keys and I know how to control it. And I think had I have gone to AA, I probably would have had a little bit of an easier journey, but that it, I would still be sober. I just think I would have understood my actions a little bit more. So that in a nutshell is my sober story. So, okay. So let's, um, let's see. One thing I want to talk to you about as I spit all over myself is if you remember correctly, um, I have been struggling a little bit with my weight and it's not so much like the amount that I weigh, but more how I feel in my body right now. Um, let's just say at the beginning of last week, you're very welcome, Julie. And you know what? Anytime you're on, ask specific questions. If you still have questions, hon, you can still ask them. I will break away and I will answer any question you have. Um, so I just wasn't comfortable in my skin. I didn't feel right. And every time, no matter what I ate, I was getting on the scale and the scale was just continuing to go and my pants were fitting weird and I was just bleh. So I started on Sunday, I started a calorie counting app and what it has done is it has enabled me to basically log in my food to the point where I can see like my eating patterns. I I noticed that I was not eating breakfast. I was eating a huge lunch and then I was snacking all day. And that's not a good relationship to have with food. And so I have been logging my food so I can see when I eat and how much and if it's good for me. And I got on the scale this morning and I've lost one pound. And I'm really, you know what, I'm really proud of myself because not my scale was going up and I had no control over that. And so long as it is steady and it is there and even just losing one pound, I'm really very proud of myself because not only did I lose that pound, but I feel like my bloating kind of like that extra, um, water retention is going away. And the way that I know that it's going away is because I was putting on my eye watch and I was having a hard time uh, putting it to the setting that I always wear it. It was like, why is my watch so tight? And I'm like, well, I guess it's so tight. The same reason that your pants are tight and the same reason that this is tight and the same reason you don't feel comfortable in your body. So the moral of this little tidbit was the simple fact that sometimes it's not so much about what the scale says, but how you feel in your body in connection to the food that you're eating. So I have found that I was eating way too many carbs. So I am kind of evening that out. I found that I was eating way too much fat. So I'm kind of evening that out. It keeps track of the water that I drink. And I can tell, even though I've only lost a pound, that I... I feel like I have less water retention, which I'm super excited about. And the, um, the app that I use, and it's by no means do, am I affiliated in any way with this? It's the My Net Diary. Yeah, that's what it's called, My Net Diary. And it just basically tracks all the food that I'm eating and tells me whether or not I'm eating healthy. And then also too, really quick, and then we're gonna get on the main subject, is that, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh, Lonnie, oh my Lanta, why do you do this? I don't know. It, it will come back to me. You know what, if it wasn't that important, it just wasn't that important. And then um, I have been all about my red lip, but today I'm wearing my MAC lip liner. No, this is the MAC liquid, love me liquid lip color. So this is an also another good alternative to a red lip. If you don't want to do that bright, bold, brash red lip, get yourself like a dark burgundy. And it's, um, to me, it's very similar to a red lip, but it's just not like that, that in your face kind of bold red, which I personally am in love with right now, but just, um, just isn't, um, 
blah, 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 just isn't red. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about some stuff. I uh, got a comment on one of the little videos that I posted, and somebody asked me if I was a loner. And I'm like, no, I'm not a loner. I love people. You know what? I like being with people um, who match my energy, who enjoy the same things that I enjoy, and all of that. Sandy, this is called... I can't read it. It's called... Oh, you know what? I have it in my shop my look link so give me a minute and i will show you that show you show you show you that it's called uh, been there mob that something like that but i will get to it it's too dark and it's too small and i'm too old to read the teeny tiny little writing but i'm okay with that courtney says i love a red lip but i tend to move away um, from them in spring and summer and embrace more colors like berry absolutely and also too i thought the berry coordinated a little bit more with my top than the red so i um that's one of the reasons why i picked this so she, so the lady asked me if i was a loner and i'm like no i'm not a loner because apparently it was i shop by myself all the time i shop by myself all the time because i'm recording myself all the time i put my entire life on social media all the time because this is what I do for a living, all right? I look at it this way. I love people, but right now people and being like social and hanging out and going to lunch and, and chit-chatting, it's not in my plans to dominate the world, all right? I am the CEO of my own world and right now I am a boss lady and I have so much drive to get my message out, to, in, to um, inspire you to do this and to do that, that I just don't have time for, for, for fluff, I guess you could say. And I'm okay with that. I love it. I love my life right now. I am just driven to succeed in what it is that I want to succeed at succeed at succeed at and um part of me was like my morning show my morning show is because i always dreamt of a network reaching out to me being like hey we think you're pretty interesting you know what what about doing a morning show and then i would have been like oh cool great i'll do that well no network's been calling me so i decided to do it myself and it's all about empowerment and it's all about you know being focused. And when you're focused, it's really important to, when you have a dream, it's really important sometimes to just go for it. All right. Go for it with all the energy you can muster, because sometimes we're like, gosh, you know what? I'd really like to do that, but I'm scared. And then you don't do it. And I've gotten over the fear and I've gotten over a whole lot of insecurity and a whole lot of doubt. And right now, you can call me a loner, but I, um, I don't, I'm not a loner. I am just, um, I am focused. And I, and I am, again, the CEO of my world. And right now my world is just a jumping. And one of the things that my world is jumping with is affiliate marketing. So I decided today that I was going to share with you 10 tips that if you want to start affiliate marketing yourself, because you can Google it uh, on any platform and you are going to come across all sorts of information. I mean, people make channels out of just telling you how to do affiliate marketing and stuff like that. And sometimes to me, um, sometimes I agree with what they say and sometimes I don't. And everybody is going to start their own sort of like online store or affiliate marketing. You're going to have to do it to your own moral code. All right. There's nobody who is going to be standing over you telling you how to market your links except for you. So all of the, um, 
All of the tips that I'm giving you are the tips that I have incorporated into my own platform. And these are tips that I'm comfortable with because trust me, I could be much more aggressive with my affiliate marketing, but it, I'm not comfortable with that. And we'll get more into that as we get deeper into the subject. So these are my top 10 um, tips if you want to start affiliate marketing. Now, don't be out there thinking like, well, I need to have a certain amount of people to follow me in order to be an affiliate. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, if you have any sort of niche, if you have any sort of following, I would look into getting affiliate links. I mean, if you keep talking about a product over and over and over again, Doc Martens and Free People, you should you should reap the benefits of that. I mean, you are giving them advertising for free. So my first tip is going to be pick something, pick an affiliate that you're going to be um, um, representing that is personal to you that you like and that is within your niche. For example, if I, because I'm all about makeup, um, I'm all about clothes, I'm all about just like your mental health. And if I'm like, hey, you know what, here's a link in case you need tires, or here's the link in case you need some, you know, computer stuff, because I am the most uncomputer computer person ever, it wouldn't fall within my niche. And to me, if I start picking subjects or picking um, brands or something like that, that I don't personally use, I think it's a little cringy. I'm just going to say it. I mean, it, it's again, my moral code and I never, um, use or I never tell you about a product I'm using if I'm not currently using it. Um, thank you, Mandy. All right. So number two, Number two is, okay, so you're going to pick a brand. Let's just say, for example, Target, all right? You want to start being an affiliate for Target. You can actually go on Target's website and you can um, just type in affiliate and you can sign up and start being an affiliate for Target. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's not something that is like a super complicated sort of thing and it's a nice little way perhaps to make a little bit of extra money either on the side or if you're a full-time content creator yourself, it's a good way to have a little bit of a, um, ooh, and it's a little bit of a way to have a little extra um, income. Tracy says, new to your channel. Thank you and welcome. I started thrifting again with your encouragements. Awesome. See, I love thrifting. I think thrifting is amazing. And I have absolutely so much fun doing it. Okay, so you're going to find a, 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 a product, um, something within your niche, and you're going to do that. Now, here's the thing. It's like once you start to become an affiliate, it's really super easy to be like, awesome. I'm going to be this affiliate. I'm going to be this affiliate. I'm going to be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And it can become overwhelming. And my advice number two is to pick your affiliate links carefully and only have as many affiliate links as you're able to actually maintain, all right? Because the last thing you want to do is to have these links and they go old and they get dusty and it doesn't do you any good. So however much time that you want to invest in this, make sure that you don't get more affiliate links than you can handle. So there you go. That's number two. Now, my tip number three, if you're going to pick an affiliate link, there's a couple of things that you want to find out. For one thing, you want to see, are you getting credit for the clicks? And what that means is that some affiliate links will um, actually pay you for people clicking on the products that you are recommending. You know what? It's called pay-per-click. Some people have it, some people don't. So if you're out there and you're trying to find an affiliate link that's going to be best for you, you might as well find one that you're going to get paid per click because, you know, you're taking the time and you're taking the effort to put that affiliate link out there. You know, it's not a whole lot, 
but it can add up. And also too, you want an affiliate link that if somebody clicks, so this is number four, you want to find an affiliate link that let's just say they click on your link, but they don't like what you showed them, but they buy something else. Most affiliate marketing links, you get your commission on that also. So you want to just make sure that when you sign up and you're going to be somebody's affiliate marketing, that you you get paid for your work. And so you want to check into that also. All right. So let's see, see, be wary. Do, 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 do. Okay. So you have, you found your niche, you found your affiliate, you have your links and you're all set to go. This is my personal opinion. And tip number five is just be really careful about how you present it to your platform. It is my personal feeling and it's my personal belief that people are here to enjoy your life, to, you know, maybe get inspiration from your message, to hang out with you. And for me personally, and one of the reasons why I don't really be like, you know, affiliate, 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 is because I don't want it to ever come across that I am here to sell you something. And it's been, again, it's just part of my moral code. It's part of how I want my platform to feel. So if you're out there and you have these affiliations, you know, you can talk to people about them. You can be like, oh, you like my top? Awesome. The link just happens to be, you know, in the description down below. Check it out if you want. To me, that's how I do my affiliate marketing. And does it um, reflect in my income? Absolutely. But again, I go to bed at night and I can put my head on my pillow and I can be like, you know what? I lived my life according to the way I like to live my life. And that's just the way I do it. Because I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I don't do very many paid promotions. And I don't do very many paid promotions because again, I'm not going to promote something that I don't 100% stand behind. I mean, I've done paid promotions for, um, for Doc Martens, um, for Dickies. And then I did, um, one for a wellness app and a shampoo. And for almost four years, that's all I've done because a lot of the people who come to me and they're like, Hey, will you sell my product? I'm like, no, I'm not going to sell a remote control helicopter to my, my platform. Why would I do that? And so they're all like, but we'll pay you. And I'm like, I don't care. Again, my platform and my message is so much more important. And does it affect me monetarily? Absolutely. But my tip number five is just be careful how you present it to your platform. And to me, I say be true to your platform. That That's why people follow you. And your affiliate links is just like a little bonus that if somebody asks you about a product that you're using, then, um, hello, Manny, uh, then you can just be like, hey, you know what? Here's the link if you want to check it out. That's just my opinion. Again, that is just my opinion. Now, another thing that I always say is that um, there are, there's a couple of different ways to do your links, all right? Some platforms have almost like a little shop that you can make your own place for people to, Hey, Kara. So you can, you can almost like have your own online shop. And I'm going to show you like what I'm talking about because I am with affiliate link, um, website called shop my, and what that is, is it's basically, um, it's basically a platform. It's like a landing pad that I can shop all sorts of different things. And I put them into one area. So whether it's makeup or home goods or something like that, I have my own little personalized online store. I like to do that just for the simple fact that some affiliate links, you, they'll only give you one link. And so what you have to do is you have to constantly repost that product in order to get that message out. For example, let's just say if you are a target influencer, you would find your, your link for whatever it is that you bought. You would have to take a picture of it. You post it on your social media with that link. 
Whereas if you have something along the lines like the shop my look, shop my shelf, I cannot talk, then you would uh, be able to go there. So, which leads me to number seven. Number seven is, is that you wanna get yourself either a link tree or a website. Websites aren't cheap. I um, looked into like getting like a website myself and they're like, I, I don't know, they start at 500 bucks. So what I did instead is I went and I got myself a link tree and I've had a link tree for a very long time. And if you don't know what a link tree is, it's basically some, it's a, it's a, um, it's a site that you can put all of your affiliates, all of your social media into one place. For example, I'm going to show you right now. This is my link tree and my link tree is in my bio. It says link tree. And what it does is it takes it to every single um, place I want to share with my platform. For example, the very first one is my daily show. And then I have a Zara wish list. I have a free people favorites. And what I'm talking about, um, like that one platform to where you can just have multiple products in that one platform is the shop my closet. And what it is, is it's basically right here, everything that I share with you, I have right here. So we are going to be able to look on this one right here that says today's makeup look. And we are gonna go down to, hold on, oh no. Where did that go? Do, do, do. All right, cause I have to find the color of my, of my lipstick. So no, it's not Urban Decay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My daily makeup look. And here it is right here. It's the Love Me Liquid Lip Color. And then the color that I have is, oh, that's not right. Hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go back here. And we are going to, well, this is interesting because I thought, okay, so as I'm like sitting here in like stunned silence, I'm like, why is it not telling you what color lipstick I'm wearing? So, I mean, we all, let's see if I can't find it. It is, mm-hmm, hmm been there plumb that that's the color so but this is basically right here this is everything that all of my shops are so that is what I wanted to show you there <laughs> can you tell I'm all blushing I'm like that was really embarrassing because that didn't work out the way I wanted it to so if you're looking for a really good one and you want to start doing your own sort of like online affiliate link um Amazon is still a great platform to do that. It absolutely, you have so much potential. Be really careful on um, your marketing of the Amazon. Um, they are amazing, but they have a very good, um, if you don't follow their procedures, they will know. And then um, be careful about the last, and tip number 10 if you want to be an affiliate is definitely um, be careful about what platform that you do your affiliate marketing on. For example, I think the number one and the easiest and the one that is the, um, the easiest to share my affiliate links with is YouTube. I mean, YouTube, you can sit there and you can put links everywhere and they're like, that's fine with me. Next is Instagram. Um, you cannot put a link in your post, but you can in your story. And then probably the most difficult um, one to share your affiliate links is my favorite TikTok. Um, they do not like it when you ask people to go to a different site. Now, TikTok does have a TikTok store and I signed up for that. But what that is, is that they actually want you to sell the products that they have in their store. So you can't sit there and find something online and be like, I want to put this in my TikTok store and sell it. You can't do that. You can't put the, the URL. You have to pick what they have available and then you can promote that and you can get commissions on that. So um, looks like TikTok is also filtering some comments. So 
it is a great way to me it's a great way to um it's it's a great way just to have like a little side vibe it's a great way to have a little extra income and i personally again i don't think that you have to have a crazy huge platform in order to do that um it really is going to depend on how much time and effort and energy you want to put into it and okay right on schedule here is my morning hot flash and like i said just look into it but make sure that whatever it is that you are going to be using your affiliate link just make sure it's something you really use it's my personal opinion and that's all i'm going to say about that right that's right so on today's outfit of the day i actually um Talking about affiliate links, I love these shoes. These are the Free People Majestic Mary Janes, and these are so amazing. Yes, I have the link in my um, bio, but I had a couple of people ask me some questions on this, these shoes, so I'm going to answer these questions now. Um, do they run wide? No, these are not wide, but they're super soft. So if you have a, like a little bit of a wider foot, I don't think it would be super constricting. I love that about it. Um, sizing, I, I would suggest size down half a size. I'm usually a size seven and I size down to a six and a half. So absolutely love them. Mary Jane's, um, I get mine from the Free People website. I've seen them on Amazon and if you want to be a super shopper, what I would do is I would just Google it and then see if you can't find them on sale anywhere because I have found them on sale on Amazon. They have purple ones right now for like, I think like 30 bucks or something crazy like that. So you can find them at different price ranges. So that was my subject for today. And also too, um, I'm coming up with some ideas for next week and some of the ideas that I'm coming up for next week, again, talking about buzz cuts. I think that more and more women are doing buzz cuts right now. And I think it's a beautiful thing. If you have never buzzed your hair, somebody told me once, um, every woman should buzz their hair at least once. And I was always like, that's just silly. I couldn't imagine everybody wanting to buzz their hair. And then I buzzed my hair and then I'm like, yeah, everybody needs to buzz their hair at least once. It is so incredibly powering. So we're going to do one of the days we're going to be talking about the buzz cuts and I'm going to figure out somehow how I can, um, I can do it live and not get my hair all over my keyboard. Another one is I had one of my um, followers, subscribers reach out to me and ask me if I could do a subject on organizing closets. So I'm gonna talk about like my tips and tricks on how to keep your closet organized and make sure that you have it fresh so when you walk in, you, you're not overwhelmed. Um, maybe some tips and tricks on what you can do if you have too many clothes. Cause she says she has like 40 pairs of jeans um, hanging in her closet and she made me feel very good about myself. Um, Tracy says, I'm buzzed. Isn't it amazing? I mean, more and more and more women are doing it, and I think that, um, I just think it's, 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 I can't, I wish I could bottle the feeling and send it to you. Um, it, it's just hard for me to describe and explain so much how amazing it is. We are going to be talking about jobs and tattoos. So if you have any questions or any, you know, like ideas on that, let me know if there's like specific questions or anything that you want to do on that one. And then um, I got my LED mask and that's the one where it's the full mask. And what I wanted to do is I want to unbox it and I want to show it to you, but I want to do a little bit more research on the whole LED process and your skin before I do my episode because um, tattoo, tattoo Tuesday, get your, 
your questions ready. But I wanted to do um, I want to do a little bit more research because I just don't want to be again, you know, just be like, hey, somebody sent me something, so I think it's awesome. I want to be able to give you the specifics of like, hey, you know what? If you use an LED mask this many times a week, it's supposed to do this. And everything in my preliminary research so far is very favorable. So I wanna give you some options and stuff like that. So we're gonna be talking about that one day. Tracy says, and naturally graying and love it. Yes, I think gray hair is sexy. And for many, many, many decades, only men got to claim that. All right, have you ever noticed, and this is not guy bashing at all, but whenever a man would get gray, he would be a silver fox. And whenever women would get gray, we would just be old. And to me, I think we need to, to, to take back that, that power. And I think we need to take back that whole ideology that men are allowed to age gracefully and we have to fight it like we are in the purge movie. All right. That is how it feels sometimes being over 50. It's almost like you are fighting for your, your, your rights to exist. And it's to me, it's like, no, you know what? I challenge, I, I, I will be a silver fox, except I don't know if I want to be a silver fox because that's like a guy thing. So I think I want to be like a silver meerkat or like a silver badger or something cute, but with like a little bit of a, with some claws. Cause you know what? We gotta have a little bit of bite in us. So instead of a silver fox, what should we be? I don't wanna be like some, I don't know. I don't wanna be an elephant. Cause you know, they're already gray. So what's the big deal about that? And so, I don't know. Why did they come up with silver fox? I mean, who was it that was sitting there and they're like, hey, I got a really cool animal. Let's be a fox. So, hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll be the silver meerkats until I can think of something better. Silver queen. I like that. We will be the silver queen. Kind of like the queen of hearts. We will be just as brutal, but in a nicer way. And we can do that. We'll be the silver queens. And that's what the energy is that we have to, we have to take back that energy. We have to own that energy. And we have to stop thinking that our age makes us weak because it doesn't. Our age does not make us weak. It doesn't make us frail. It doesn't make us timid and it doesn't make us quiet. All right. We can be just as bright and bold at 50 with silver and gray hair as we can be at any age, but it's up to us to take that power back. So I will say it again and again and again on my morning show that you need to be a lady boss and take back our power. It is just something that we need to do, period. So I was going to do another follow-up on the whole, um, oh gosh, I'm still upset over Harry's car chase story. I don't know if any of you are also but I'm having a really hard time getting over that because I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like, I think it's because I got so upset that I was like, um, yeah, no, I just got really upset. So I was reading a little bit um, the last night and people are like deep diving into it and they're breaking down why it, it couldn't have happened for two hours in New York City. So I am going to work this weekend. I'm going to work very hard on getting over it and getting past it. I'm starting a new season of RuPaul. Um, I'm on the Superstar, um, the third one. So I'm super excited to be binge watching that this weekend. I'm going to go, I'm going to do a... Um, I'm going to do a video going to Trader Joe's because I saw a recipe for, um, gosh, it's like, it's like, oh, uh, it's like pokey, but it's made out of beets and it's supposed to taste just like ahi tuna. 
And so I want to go get that and I want to make myself a poke bowl, um, but using this beet product that's supposed to taste like ahi tuna. So I'll probably do a video about that and post that and see what you all think about that. And then, yes, I am going to go thrifting this weekend. Tracy, I am going thrifting on Saturday because here in Riverside in Marietta, the Goodwill um, actually has a discount on Saturdays where they have like different colored tags and depending on what tag it is, they do it in rotation, but they put stuff on 50% off and then they also have stuff for 25% off. So I am going to go thrifting again and I will be recording that because Again, I am the CEO of my own world, and I am going to, um, I'm just going to do it. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I can say. I'm only going to do it. All right. Do we, um, Courtney, is there any questions that we need to answer before we say goodbye? Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be fun. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we have any questions over on TikTok. Do, do, do. Some comments got, um, some comments got, um, had to get blocked because people weren't being very nice. Yeah, do, do, do. Nope, we don't have any questions over there. So, yeah, so that was it. That was my, like, hey, I'm going to talk for two hours, our conversation. <laughs> so, um, Oh, Rosie O'Donnell is live right now. We should invite her to go live. Do you want me to try? All right, let's do this. Let's see if... Oh, I just sent the invite to Rosie O'Donnell. Let's see if she'll accept it. She probably won't, but what a hoot that would be if she did. Yes, this is actually happening. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but we follow each other on TikTok. So tips on covering under eye bags. Okay, so the tips for that is, Tracy, is sometimes the less is more. And whenever it comes to, um, whenever it comes to uh, covering up fine lines or wrinkles, it's really important to make sure that we don't put too much thick product on it. Okay, so what I would do is I use a Maybelline eraser, that pink, that pink shade. And what I do is I put that on underneath my eye and then I have a sponge, a real small sponge. And I will make sure that it is absolutely patted in very gently under my eye. Once I have that all patted in, then I'll put my foundation on top of that. Again, keeping, I don't put a whole lot of makeup under my eyes. Wrinkles. Yeah, and here's the thing, Tracy, is as far as foundation goes, try using a BB cream. And the BB cream that I like the best, because not all BB creams are created equal, some of them are thicker, but the Maybelline BB cream, the shade I use is medium. I will put that, that's the foundation I use because it it acts like a lotion, but it's a foundation at the same time. What happens is, is if I use a powder makeup or if I use a really heavy makeup, it sets in and it pulls right in my wrinkles and my fine lines. And that's not what I want. And it just has a tendency to have a complete different sort of um, effect that I was going for. So get that eraser, get the pink one. It's, it's, I had to buy it on Amazon, but put it under your eye, not a whole lot, but just a little bit under your eye and then put your BB cream under there. And what tips on covering, oh, and then the bags. Okay, I'm thinking wrinkles, I'm sorry. What I would do then is, again, the same philosophy is you're not going to ever cover them, but you don't want to accentuate them. Now, Rock brand, the ROC, they have some under eye patches that you can actually put on and you sleep in them. They're a really good product. They're, you just put them on and they're just tiny little patches and you're supposed to keep them on to six to eight hours. So I would... Um, start sleeping in that 
And then, you know those little like rollers that you put in the refrigerator and you, you roll your face? What I would do in the morning is, is I would very gently get like one, like a little eye roller under there just to kind of get the, um, just to kind of get the puffiness from out from underneath your eyes. And that is aside from, aside from just that. And then also to try slugging. I absolutely love slugging if you haven't heard. And slugging is where you use Vaseline at night. And I... Uh, truthfully and I, again I, I just went over with the whole affiliate thing I have no reason to tell you this is amazing unless I absolutely thought it was amazing and I absolutely think that this is amazing slugging sleeping with Vaseline on my face has more has changed and it has gotten rid of more wrinkles than I had ever imagined it would and I have um I absolutely love it I put on less daytime moisturizer because my fin my skin no longer feels really dry and really just tight. So Tracy, in a nutshell, what I would do is I would look into slugging at night for all your fine lines and wrinkles, get those rock under eye patches just to help with the wrinkles and the swelling, and then get your little iced roller and very gently just kind of like try to put a little ice just to get rid of the, the bagginess and just a little bit of the water retention. And also too, I notice a huge difference in my skin if I get dehydrated. If I don't drink enough water, my my wrinkles just just go. I will if I don't drink enough water, my like little um, eyes right here, I almost get like a little bit more of a drooping in my eye. And I can see a difference in my face again for diet and for drinking water and the improvement for skin tone and for your wrinkles. So drink a lot of water too. So Rosie O'Donnell didn't come live with us, but it was kind of fun pushing the button just to see if she would. I mean, I thought that was kind of exciting. I mean, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't join our live, but we can say that we were that close to it. And you know what? It's all about taking chances, you know? And here I am. I was all like, should I do it? You know what? And then why not? You know what? So she sees the request come up and she's like, I don't want to go live with her. I don't, you know what? That just is what it is. She just didn't get to be a part of our, our fabulousness today. So Ah, that's it. I am going to go. I am going to go work on another video. Again, I have a Zoom meeting today. Hopefully I get enough information that I can pass along with you on Monday. I think that's super exciting. On Monday, uh, we post our podcast that Robert and I do on Monday. And his subject for Monday is going to be about different love languages, about how one person can express their love in one way and another person can express their love in another. And unless you understand people's love languages, you don't, sometimes you can miss kind of these little small things that people do out of trying to show their love that you might completely miss. So I think on Monday, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We're going to talk about the love language. And then um, Tracy says, thank you so much. So happy I was able to attend today. Have a great day. Well, Tracy, we are back every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I hope you come back. So Monday is going to be about the love language. Tuesday is Tattoo Tuesday. Wednesday, we'll do Organizing Your Closet. Uh, Thursday, we will talk about buzz cuts and Friday is going to be the mystery day. So who knows what we talk about on Friday? Maybe we'll just do Friday all about Q and A's on Friday. Ooh, there you go. We'll do Q and A Friday, Q and A Fridays. So what I'll do is I'll start like throughout the week, I'll start gathering questions and then you can ask your questions live and that's what we'll do. How exciting. You know what? I didn't realize that we were going to uh, come up with our entire week's schedule, but we just did. And I think we are pretty amazing. And I say we because I'm talking about you all. So have a great Friday. Remember, be bright, be bold, be brave. I love you all dearly. Um, push that button in life. Ask people to go live, even if you don't think they will. Um, 
If you want to do an affiliate marketing, by all means do it. Have fun with it. Just remember, be honest and be transparent. Um, I love you dearly all. Have a great weekend and I will see you again on Monday. Bye everyone.